In the year 988, in one of the most pivotal events in the whole of human history, Grand Prince Vladimir of Kiev baptized the people of Russia into the Orthodox Christian faith. This was perhaps one of the most significant baptisms since the baptism of Christ in the rivers of the Jordan, because the spiritual consequences of that conversion led to the creation of Holy Russia, the home of the Most Holy Theotokos. The same grace that came down upon the Russian people in the Dnieper River 1,025 years ago has flowed freely throughout the world thanks to the missionary spirit of the Russian soul. If we carefully examine the thousand-year history of Russia, we see that we are not dealing with a decline. On the contrary, we see expansion. Where did the venerable saints and missionaries come from? Where did Russia go? Russia went into Japan and China, spreading the rays of the light of Orthodoxy, which Saint Vladimir had bequeathed to every Russian person. And those Russian people, like any Russian person, were Slavs. Our defining feature as Slavs is that we want to love others and impart something unto them. And we carry this light, this ray. For the past 75 years, the faithful of the Russian Church abroad living in America would gather every July by the thousands in the small town of Jackson, New Jersey to pay homage to this great event in the history of Russia and the world. On that day, it seemed to me that the whole world was orthodox, feeling that we weren't just small groups of people scattered everywhere, but sometimes that we could have 2,000 people that get together, even more than that. Especially the immigrants who came to America. They used to all gather there in, in large numbers because they would meet their friends, there was like a gathering place. But what is the true meaning of St. Vladimir's Church in the 21st century? And why should the faithful gather there every July? Is it just nostalgia for the good old days of Rokor? If we stop to take a closer look at the history and spiritual significance of this grand memorial, we slowly start to uncover the true meaning of this ancient church in the 21st century. Since the earliest days of our diocese, our bishops have always gathered the faithful several times a year for pilgrimages. They understood that when gathering together in prayer, Orthodox Christians become spiritually reinforced to better face the temptations of the world. It's really quite an amazing and unusual phenomenon in the Russian Church abroad in comparison to other jurisdictions. I have never seen the same level of affection and the same level of continuity of memory, the same level of place of still existing authority of hierarchs that are now past. Vladika Vitali, the founder of this church, was uh, a man of great vision and great optimism. He had plans to spread the Orthodox faith here amongst the Americans, and he wanted this church, to use his own words, to be a beacon banner for the Russian people, most immediately, for all of Orthodox Christians. He wanted people to rally around this church, for this church to be a, a spiritual center, someplace where, especially once a year, that we all gather together. He was a very humble man, very humble man. He was, you know, sort of a, a kind of a monastic spiritual man. So he contributed to building up Orthodoxy in America for all the days that he lived here. On Samuel Missionieram, he was a missionary himself. He put this church forward to be an expression of that missionary spirit that he bore within himself. These men are extraordinary because they were born in a world, Tsarist Russia, that ceased to exist by the time that they reposed. You would read about them arriving in Western Europe and arriving in the United States, and they were almost like they might, might as well have been not from 30 or 40 years ago, they might as well have been from 500 years ago. They, they spoke in a way that was ancient. They looked in their personal countenances like they were ancient. And there was a grace about them that, that I think shocked the West. They began to address the things of the modern world as if they came right out of the ancient world to address them. And sadly enough, of course, all these people passed away. They're with the Lord now. There's less and less and less sad, you know. So it's not what it used to be. That's the sad part I see now. To an extent, we've forgotten about this, this missionary calling. If Vladika Vitali could see uh, the state of things now with all of the Russians coming here to America and 
with uh, so many American converts. I think he would tell us, uh, basically, time to roll up our sleeves and, and get to work. We've been very focused on um, trying to build something up here, and now it's up to us to bear witness to that and to share it with the rest of America. And this church is here to remind us of that. 2013 marks the 1,025th anniversary of the baptism of Russia and also the 75th anniversary of the founding of St. Vladimir Memorial Church. At the spring session of the Diocesan Council in Howell, New Jersey, the hierarchs and council members discussed the organization of this year's celebration. Certain questions began to arise, such as, why is it necessary to mark this anniversary? How does this Russian feast, in honor of a Slavic prince, relate to the new generation of Rokor clergy and faithful, many of whom have no prior connection to Russian culture? For me, a convert priest, Vladimir and his endeavor found what I was seeking for, um, found the fullness of the Orthodox faith, the fullness uh, of a way of life that connects us to Christ. And so for me, my journey was much more humble than St. Vladimir's, but his journey is my journey. And so we in America, we converts, really relate to St. Vladimir and his discovery of the faith as our discovery of the faith. Well, St. Vladimir is, they, me, me, is meaningful, it's historical, you see, it, it's the rule of our orthodoxy, you see. So we have to remember these saints, what, how they brought Christianity to Rus, and what they did for us, and uh, well, it's, it's the root of orthodoxy for us in America. The meaning of this event has changed over time. Uh, today it means uh, preserving our traditions, preserving uh, the faith of our youth. In, in past years, everyone would gather in order to pray for the salvation of Russia and that uh, Russia would be freed from the communist yoke. But now that Russia is freed, now we have to focus more on, on praying for the unity of our church and for the unity of, of our Christian family. In 1988, several thousand people gathered in Jackson to celebrate the millennium of the baptism of Rus and most of them were Russian, or had some sort of Slavic roots. 25 years later, we look at the Russian church abroad, specifically the Eastern American diocese, and we see that 50% or more of the clergy and faithful at any given large spiritual gathering are converts and non-Russians. This interesting phenomenon will no doubt continue at this year's St. Vladimir's Day, when the fullness of the diocese will be represented in a celebration of our faith. Rokor is present in many countries all across the world and, and we have the unique experience of dealing with orthodoxy within an environment that is not indigenously Russian Orthodox. And by doing so, we, we attract non-Orthodox, we strengthen our Orthodoxy, we preserve our Russianness, and that's, that's basically the reason for existence. But in an ever-changing world, the question of Rokor's very existence has been called into question by some critics who are of the opinion that the church abroad is the church of the 18th century, unable to connect with people in the 21st century. Rokor is not the church of the 18th century, it's the church of the 1st century and the church of the 21st. <laughs> These are the types of issues that members of the diocesan council would like to address during a special symposium on July 27th. Not only do we have churches that celebrate the services in Slavonic, we have them in English, we have them in French, we have them in Spanish, all just within our diocese. Rokor has developed its own culture and we interact with all of the other cultures that are, that are existent. We're welcoming to everybody and we try not to uh, focus specifically on, on the Russian ethnicity. The Russian Church abroad is the face of a special, sincere and pure zeal for God. For the Holy Church, this is very valuable, very precious. We, we practice a very traditional, very conservative form of, of Russian Orthodoxy. We, we tend to shy away from uh, innovations. If you never know what's going to happen next, then it's not encouraging. If you feel you're drifting away from the past, drifting away from uh, tradition, it's not encouraging. That's the danger of modernism, because it wants to constantly change. And you can't change the, the, the message of Christ. You can't change the church. The church is the church, the body of Christ. He, he was before, he is today, and he will be tomorrow. 
The very witness of the Russian Orthodox Church is in her otherworldliness, rejecting the notion of conforming to the constantly mutating conditions of modernity, turning down all of these changes. Today we are witnessing a leveling, an erosion of many important moral positions. We are told that this is a matter of little concern, that we must keep up with the times in order to soften our image and thus introduce the most vulgar pluralism into the very life of the Church. They preach tolerance, that is, adaptation to and conciliation with evil. All of this is absolutely wrong. And in this regard, the Church abroad has always been very, very strict, foremost with herself. And it seems to me that it is precisely the Russian Church abroad that so carefully preserves holy tradition and our traditions. It is she, in particular, who is capable of providing us with such pastors who would truly hold in their hands the living thread of inheritance, of continuity with Archbishop of Verki, Metropolitan Filaret, Metropolitan Anastasi. These individuals whose names I've listed were not only and not so much theologians as much as they were mystical men of prayer on behalf of the Church. We're called to um, conserve that what was, what was given to us by our forefathers. Uh, that's the trademark of orthodoxy. We cannot just let that go and, and, and begin changing like uh, Western denominations do this all the time. The Christian faith was given in its fullness by Christ to the apostles, so it must have been complete and perfect from the beginning, because if that were not the case, then living today we would have an advantage over the apostles and there'd be no reason to read the New Testament. We'd know more than they did. Nowadays, the word conservatism has acquired a negative shade of meaning. Yet tradition, Greek paradosis, Latin traditio, is one of the key notions of Christian theology, indicating the succession and passing on the church truth from generation to generation, from Christ and the apostles to the present day. Christian church cannot but be traditional and therefore conservative in a positive sense of the word. In the era when moral principles of society have been shaken under the influence of secular and liberal ideology, Christian conservatism and traditionalism are especially needed. Our Orthodox Church traditions are eternal, and in our Russian Orthodox Church we have a very specific tradition. And if we forget our past, we won't have any kind of future. Um, we're not living in the past, but we remember our past because in the past we had many spiritual heroes, uh, like St. Vladimir in his own special way. Uh, those character uh, traits which those spiritual heroes had uh, can be taken up by any Orthodox Christian, even in the modern world. Celebrating the 1025th anniversary of the baptism of Russia, our diocese has an opportunity to come together as a sign of our unity in Christ. With so much turbulence in the world around us, the fundamental virtues of the Russian Church abroad are crucial to the future of Orthodox America. The upcoming celebration is more than just a celebration of the baptism of Russia. It is a celebration of the spiritual legacy of Rokor. I hope that all of us, I know that I am, going to take advantage of this wonderful opportunity to be in Jackson because it will be a celebration of the fullness of the Orthodox faith, of the fullness of the unity of the Orthodox faith. And just in, as in America and its foundation in orthodoxy was under the Russian church, uh, so too maybe we head back in that direction. Returning to these traditions is no easy task, but it begins when the clergy start to inspire the faithful to come together. I'm asking that all of you who can begin to make plans to participate 
with as many pilgrims from your parishes as possible so that we might show the whole world that orthodoxy remains vibrant and united as we move into the future. Indeed, our strength is in our unity. И возрадуется сердце ваше, и радость ваша никто не отнимет у вас. Только подумайте, какая здесь глубина, что у нас действительно возрадуется сердце великой духовной радостью, и что эта духовная радость ничто в жизни не может отнять от православного человека. Мы наследники князя Владимира. Ну, почувствуйте своим сердцем, что мы наследники православные люди. Наше достояние здесь, на этой земле, приобщиться к части неба. Вот почему и сказано, что эта радость никто абсолютно в мире не может от нас отнять, как и доказано бесчистыми угодниками Божиим, постоявшими за Святую Русь. Аминь. Yeah.